The mind control the body, not the body controlling the mind. That's it, get off of him, get off of him. Get on down there. Move, move it. Get While the it. experts set modest goals for the Dallas Cowboys in 1991, the team did not and the sounds of summer camp reverberated with equal amounts of bashing and brash predictions. There's a great heritage here, and we can sell that to our players, that uh, being a Dallas Cowboy in the next 1990s and being the team of the 90s is going to be a special thing. If you went through the year virtually injury-free and did not make the playoffs, would that be a crushing blow? It won't happen. We, you know, we'll be in the playoffs. The outlandish statements trumpeted in July became December's outrageous reality. Let's go, Superman! Playmaker! Come get with it, play! Come get with it! When no one else believed, the Cowboys kept a faith that was never broken. The boys of summer became men in winter and swept into the playoffs. Waits and hangs on three yards deep, runs it out. Cuts at the 15, a hole at the 20. He's got the kicker to beat at the 30. He's got a block at the 40. Right is gone. Alexander Wright got two blocks, 102 yards, touchdown. I said it was a day of big plays. It's just nothing but big plays. The Cowboys are a playoff team. Wow. <laughs> wow. I do love it so. I do love it so. Would 1991 be a dark season? Would the Cowboys escape the shadows cast by the imposing teams in the NFC East? On opening day, Dallas saw the light and the season took shape against the Cleveland Browns. Troy Aikman generaled an offense that was opportunistic and decisive in the scoring zone. The 26 to 14 victory was followed by a crucial game with the arch-rival Redskins, a team rated by most to be the best in the NFC. 25, Aikman, handoff Smith, and left tackle pops out to the 30, a block from right, gets into the 40, breaking right to the 45, holy cow, what a great play. Touchdown, Emmett Smith, 75 yards, thank you very much. I don't believe the run. Although it was a brilliant display of wide open football and a showcase for the brilliance of Emmett Smith, the Cowboys lost 33 to 31. 56 is soft and going to be over the top on him, okay? So that's, that should be a good play for us. A heartbreaking loss was followed by a backbreaking defeat to the Philadelphia Eagles. The 23 to nothing defeat to the Bully Boys in green had no silver linings. 90 yards of offense, 11 sacks, and their eighth straight loss to a bitter enemy added up to agony and self-doubt. You know, we ran into a wall with the Eagles. And that's when we said, oh man, we're not as good as we think we are. We got to play every game as hard as we played the Washington game. And then maybe, maybe we'll be a playoff team. Week four brought clear skies and clear sailing for the Cowboys against the Phoenix Cardinals. Aikman, handoff, Smith, big hole up the middle midfield. The 40, Smith with a whole field. The 22 men chasing. Smith, the 10, Emmett Smith, 60 yards. Touchdown, Cowboys. Thank you very much yet again. With a 2-2 two two record, the Cowboys met the Super Bowl champion Giants in a test that would determine whether they would pass or fail this season. The Giants explored all of Texas Stadium, but rarely found the end zone, as the Cowboy defense created opportunities and carved out points. Blake throws it out to Jared Bunch, the rookie at the 20. Fumble! Horton picks it up! 15-10! Horton, touchdown, Cowboys! Well, the Giants are stunned, and I think a lot of the Cowboys are, and I certainly am. Aikman straight drop, throws right, Urban at the five! Urban fighting Collins, touchdown! Leading 21 to 16 with just over a minute remaining, Cowboy hopes of snapping a six-game losing streak to the Giants rested on one play. I mean, 
I call owes this football team not just because of this game but for a couple of other plays. It's time for I call to make a play. I would think the Giants will keep picking on him on that side. He's going to have the opportunity. Here's second down. Hostetler back to throw. No pressure. Deep to the end zone on the right sideline. The ball's intercepted by Isaac Holt. <laughs> Shower is going to feel better to him right now. 47 guys believing, 47 guys hanging in there for four quarters. Hey, super, super job, because you could have gotten down, you know, when they got on top of you, and you could have said, oh, here it goes again. But it, those days are over with. It's not going to be, here it goes again. We finally four jump quarters. over the hurdle and get Anything the bell off our back. After that game, you know, we just say, hey, you know, we could play with anybody. We really can't play with anybody. A winning attitude translated into victories. Yeah, a little pressure from Jeff Coat. Throws it out, intercepted by Horton at the 35. The sideline to midfield. Get, looking for a block from Brown. Runs to the 20. And for the second week in a row, it is touchdown, Ray Horton. All right, Ray, and what a play he made. The Cowboys defeated the Packers. And then behind Pro Bowl quarterback Troy Aikman, they outgunned the Cincinnati Bengals. Defenses were left on the practice fields as both teams rolled up almost 60 points and 800 yards of total offense. The Cowboys' third straight victory reflected the depth and wellspring of youth on the team. Running back Ricky Blake was a stand-in who stood out. And for the first time in team history, the defense registered a touchdown in three consecutive games thanks to rookie linebacker Dixon Edwards. And as Eisen back to throw, steps up, pass hit, The Dallas Cowboys were back, and so were their fans. Never bashful at home, Cowboy Faithful crept out of hiding on the road. The fever for America's team was illustrated by jam-packed Texas Stadium, which was sold out for every home game for the first time since 1986. And while there was a parade of hits on the field, there was a hit parade in the stands as everyone joined in to jam to the Cowboys' winning beat. Our fans have developed confidence in their team and our staff and the direction we're going out there. And consequently, that has created so much excitement in the Metroplex. Exciting was the perfect word for Cowboys special teams. Units that specialized in organized mayhem and destruction. Tasks that once seemed so routine to Cowboy opponents now became risky adventures. The team established a club record with four blocked punts this season. And while Cowboys special teams create turnovers, they also turned games around by scoring touchdowns on four separate occasions. And they blocked it. Robert Williams in midair. Touchdown, Cowboys. Robert Williams, big play man, has put Dallas in front. Keep something down here, Chief. Kenny, stripping the ball. Gang tight to try to rip it. The defense was both resilient and relentless. The secondary included Ray Horton, Bill Bates, Kenneth Gant, Robert Williams, James Washington, and Isaac Holt. The defense was undersized, but never overmatched. Rookie cornerback Larry Brown, number 24, took wrong turns, but ended up in the right places. The 12th round draft pick played like a first rounder, totally confounding both draft experts and expert receivers.
What was crystal clear to every observer was the dramatic impact of Russell Maryland, the number one pick in the entire NFL. He's a unique individual. Whatever it takes to be at the top of his game, whatever it takes to be one of the best in his field, that's what he'll do. We're going to put Russell in situations where, where we're lining him up inside or outside, crowding the football, and giving him a chance just to use quickness and leverage more than size and strength. Maryland's quickness, feel for the game, and all-out hustle make him a natural to follow in the cowboy tradition and defensive tackle set by former greats Bob Lilly and Randy White. The rapid development of both Maryland and Brown can be traced to Jimmy Johnson and his energetic staff, a tireless group of teachers, motivators, and innovators. Believe in each other, believe in each other, make plays, swarm, pursue. And that's a great job of turning in body and sinking your shoulder in there. Hell of a job. More aggressive on the, on the sink technique, okay? What they're doing. No, no, I'm just talking in general. Both the coaches and players would be severely tested by a series of games that began with an ugly lost to the Lions. The Cowboys rebounded with a victory over the Cardinals, and the next week they were on a roller coaster ride against the Oilers in the Battle of Texas when they ran off the rails in overtime. Real careful with it here. The Oilers 25, and Aikman gives it to Emmett Smith, bounces out right, a great block from Eric Williams, he runs to the 20. He fumbles the football, and the Oilers have it at the 14 yard line. The Cowboys have the game won, and it's the first fumble that Emmett Smith has lost all year. It was not meant to be a lucky game 11 against the Giants at the Meadowlands, as the Cowboys rolled snake eyes with the men in stripes. Giants adjust defensively, Aikman back to throw. Stands has all day, now runs it up, now dumps it left flat, Emmett Smith. Fumbles the ball and it's ruled incomplete. It was ruled. No, now they give it to the Giants. Well, the Cowboys, as you would expect, they're arguing about this and hoping for a replay. I don't think he's ever got possession. Three losses in four games left the Cowboys with a six and five record and heading blindly toward certain disaster against the Redskins. Well, you know, we don't need no speech today. We don't need no, we just want to play Washington. We feel we can beat Washington. And then Coach Jones came in, he looked around, man, everybody was tense, waiting for him to say his speech or whatever to get everybody going. He just said, hey, let's go. Boom, we jumped out there on the skins and it was all over capital punishment. Facing the undefeated Redskins, the best team in pro football, the Cowboys mustered both heart and soul and saved their season. kick to Irving. Oh, it's an onside kick, and it's loose, and the Redskins, I think, have recovered at the four. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The Cowboys, the Cowboys have recovered an onside oh, kick. Oh, man, they are letting out all the stops today, and three receivers go right. Maybe they're going to go Big Ben. Straight drop, no rush, and they are Big Benning it to the end zone. This will be a prayer up in the air, and it might be, it's, it might be caught. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Oh, Big Ben. But the clock almost struck midnight on the Cowboys when Troy Aikman was lost for the season. A lot of football left. Don't worry about this. Can't go now. We'll do it again. It's a time, baby. The team lost its quarterback, but not its will, as backup Steve Berline led them to victory. Hands and throws it left, and Irvin caught it at the five, and he walks in. Touchdown. The sweet sound of the silence in this building is absolutely stunning. I think it's the biggest and the best Cowboys win since they beat the Giants in 1985 to win the NFC East. Super job of working. Hey, super job of believing. Just like what we talked about at practice. Hey, you know, when you ever go after a big gorilla, you don't ever hit him lightly. You hit him with everything you got. Yeah! Oh! Hey! hey. hey. The Cowboys were riding tall in the saddle when they met the Steelers in game 13. 
facing a blitz. He stands, he throws it right. Irvin crossing, Cutter, Cutter, might go. 45, 40, 30 to the 20. A man to beat Woodson will get him at the 10. Irvin breaks free. Michael Irvin scores. Touchdown, Cowboys. Triumphs over the Steelers and Saints set up a showdown with the Cowboys' bitterest foe. There's probably been ball games where we have been uh, intimidated, out hit, out physical. It was probably the Philadelphia games over the last couple of years. Damn it, baby! We can get the OFO. Pass! <laughs> Ken Norton, Jimmy Jones, Tony Casillas, Jim Jeffcoat, and Tony Tolbert chased down and smothered the Eagle offense. The Cowboys led 15 to 13 when the Eagles' jinx was finally broken by an 80-yard drive and three perfectly executed plays late in the fourth quarter. All right, thunderous Philly crowd exhorting their defense. Play fake by Burleigh. First down pass, Novacek in midfield. Now to the 48-yard line of Philadelphia. Second down eight, Dallas at the Eagle 41. Burleigh to throw, has time, throws to the left sideline. Irvin at the 25, makes the move to the left sideline. Now around out into the 15-yard line. Brilliance by Michael Irvin. Brilliance. Let's go. Oh, come on, baby. Little boy, little boy, little boy. Little boy. Little boy. Oh. Rolling right, wants to throw, chase. Throws it on the run, it's caught, it's a touchdown. Is it Michael Irvin or Michelangelo? And that sends everybody at the vet home and it's going to send the Dallas Cowboys to the playoffs. We showed it, we shot it! An incredible win. They took it to the biggest, baddest defense in the sport and jammed it right down their throat. The march to the playoffs was soldiered by the foot sloggers of the offensive line. Nate Newton, Mark Stepnoski, John Gizak, Mark Tuane, Eric Williams, Alan Weingrad, Kevin Gogan, and Dale Hellestray. There was a battering ram of a fullback named Daryl Johnston. Quarterbacks Troy Aikman and Steve Berline found an inviting new target in Alvin Harper. The immense skills of the first round draft choice were evident to all those with a discerning eye for talent. He gets his accomplished deserve in it, but getting out and getting all people, what have you. Gonna be special. While the rookie proved a wise investment, the blue chip hands of Jay Novacek earned him the accolades accorded in All Pro. While Kelvin Martin and Ace Wright spiced this varied offensive mix, there were two main ingredients, two players whose futures were bonded together, whose interlocking skills lifted their team to exalted levels. So tired. Michael Urban loves the heat of battle and the glow of the spotlight. But number 88 is more grit than glitz. For he plies his trade over the middle, where the meek do not inherit the turf. The playmaker gained more yards than any receiver in the NFL and contributed big play after big play during the stretch run to the playoffs. Line five steps, a bullet to Irvin. Make plays, baby. Give me an make plays. Let's go. Where there was Urban, there was always Emmett Smith. And they became the first players from the same team to lead the NFL in receiving and rushing in the same season. 
Smith was the Houdini of running backs, escaping the shackles and constraints of defenses, disappearing, then reappearing out of nowhere. What was not an illusion was Emmett Smith's toughness and durability. Of the 406 rushes by cowboy runners, Smith carried on 365 of them. In the dirty war played inside the tackles, he made the ugly yard seem pretty, and the easy ones dazzling. Smith up the middle, 25, comes right to the 20, a block from Martin to the 10, Smith, touchdown! Cowboys. Behind Smith and Urban, the Cowboys entered the playoffs for the first time since 1985. A victory would crown this shining season. It'll put that sweet star, you know, that sweet star in the season, just like on a nice tree, you had that nice star, it'll put that sweet star in the season. That's what we gotta do, we gotta win. Gotta make it all day, baby, play, you need the ball. Turn over the touchdowns, baby. That's what we need. Let's go. Let's go hey, now. Ain't no future in front, guys. Let's go, baby. It's all on the, on line. the show. What's that, Cowboys? What's that, now, Cowboys? We here, baby. We here. We here now. The Cowboys will have it first down and 10 at the Chicago 10 yard line. Draw. Draw a pass. Pressure. <laughs> Sack him, sack him, sack him. Get there, yeah. Armed with a five-game victory streak, which included road wins over the Redskins and Eagles, the Cowboys played the Bears and Soldier Field with the confidence of a seasoned playoff team. The defense was bone-jarring at its best in the crunch and in the clutch at the goal line. Fourth down and short at the Cowboys two. The 13th play of the drive. Man in motion right. Toss right, Neil Anderson at the five. He's stopped at the Good work, Big Russ. Coming home. Good Coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Bolstered by its defense, the Cowboy offense cashed in on almost every scoring opportunity. And off again, Smith diving over the top. Touchdown for Emmett Smith. Harbaugh with a minute 12 in the game. Back to throw. A little pressure now. Hit as he throws over the middle. Intercepted by Bill Bates at the 30-yard line. Bill Bates saves the day at the 30-yard line. And the Cowboys now just kill the last minute four, and they go home. Although the Cowboys would drop out of the championship chase the next week, the 11-5 regular season and a 17-13 playoff victory over the Bears marked a return to glory for America's team. Led by Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones, the team had made the jump to the playoffs from a one-victory season faster than any team since 1960. But numbers were not the measure of this team, for they were a team that was back among the best, a team that had returned to glory. Hi, I'm Steve Sable. You know, it's going to be hard for the Cowboys to top the 1991 season for drama and excitement. But next year, the team will elevate their goals even higher. Now, to implement this plan, Dallas drafted wisely, selecting for need. Cornerback Kevin Smith from Texas A&M, linebacker Robert Jones from East Carolina, and speed receiver Jimmy Smith from Jackson State. But I think it's going to be the young, emerging players who are already Cowboys who will make the 1992 season a memorable one for Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones. To be where we are today doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, we've got a lot to be um, encouraged about because we're doing it with very young people. The continuity of the team is quite a credit to our coaching staff and to Jimmy Johnson, our head coach. Uh, but a lot of where we are today uh, can be, um, I think, credited to the enthusiasm we have for the future. The Cowboys stride confidently into the future. 
a future that will be as bright as the team's glorious past. If Dallas is to take the next giant step in the playoffs, the biggest jump will have to be made by their defense. This unit is blessed with toughness and youthful exuberance, but it is one that head coach Jimmy Johnson wants to infuse with speed, and then more speed. Defensively in particular, if you've got a fast defensive football team, I think they can run people down. I think they are able to swarm and gang tackle more so with speed. Everybody wants to have the aggressive defenses, the, uh, the hard-hitting defenses. Well, you can't be aggressive and you can't hit real hard unless you can run faster than the people that, that you're playing against. And I think we've increased the speed on this defense, and, and as a result, we're, we're more capable of making bigger plays, we're more capable of making bigger hits, and that'll continue to get better uh, as these young players that have speed mature and, and become better football players. I think a couple of guys to watch this year with the Cowboys, especially a couple of unknown guys. Watch Leon Lett on their defensive line. He's a guy who they brought along slowly last year, came from a small college late in the draft last year. They've really got a lot of confidence in him to be one of those guys who can be kind of an inside-out player. He'll be able to really stop the run inside and to be able to get some penetration in pass coverage. One player who already has all these attributes is number 92 Tony Tolbert. Tolbert is an emerging star in the NFL, a player who has the abilities to be an all-pro in the very near future. While a trip to the Pro Bowl is in Tolbert's future, Pro Bowl quarterback Troy Aikman must remain injury-free if the Cowboys expect to reach the next level. In his first three pro seasons, Aikman has not made it through an entire year without being hurt. With a healthy Troy Aikman generaling their offense, the Cowboys of 1992 will score points at will. The young quarterback has superstar weapons in receivers Michael Irvin, number 88, and tight end Jay Novacek, number 84. The player that will make the cowboy attack truly explosive is number 81, Ace Wright. He is the fastest player in the NFL, but a player that has yet to cash in on his tremendous physical assets. While Aikman can throw bullets through bulletproof defenses, one of the largest caliber weapons in the Cowboy arsenal is Michael Irvin. He is called the playmaker because he makes the clutch play in the dramatic situations. At times, he carried the Cowboys on his back last season, and in the coming year, he will shoulder the biggest receiving load. While running back Emmett Smith has attained the top rung as a running back, he will help his team grasp the brass ring playing in a Super Bowl. In 1992, Smith will be in only his third pro season, and it is a reasonable assumption that he will provide the same championship spark that was provided for so many years by the Cowboys' all-time leading rusher, Tony Dorsett. The 1992 season will be the year the Dallas Cowboys truly re-emerge as America's team. 
It will be a year when they will be treated again like royalty or rock stars. 92 will be a season where the team will travel where few thought possible, a trip taken with new stars and old heroes, a journey that will carry on the glorious tradition of the Dallas Cowboys.